overall goal of this procedure is to describe in detail a contusion model of spinal cord injury in mice, followed by a transplantation of neural stem cells. This is accomplished by first labeling post-mortem neural precursor cells, or PMNPCs, with the vital tracer PKH26. Next, a dorsal incision is made on the mouse and the spinal cord is exposed. Then, an infinite horizon, or IH, impactor device is used to create a lesion on the spinal cord. Finally, the PKH26 labeled PMNPCs are injected into the tail vein of the mouse. Ultimately, the fate of engrafted PKH26 PMNPCs at the lesion site is followed. The injury model replicates the spinal cord injury in man. The primary mechanical injury is followed by a progressive secondary de degeneration where cellular and pharmacological treatment are studied. The described applications may provide the methodological basis to obtain further insights into fate and action of stem cells transplanted into a spinal cord while degeneration and inflammatory events are taking place. Demonstrating the lesion will be Dr. Toniella Giallongo, PhD student in the laboratory, while the tail injection will be performed by Dr. Uh, Gerace, that is a postdoctoral fellow in the lab. Beginning with neural stem cells that meet the criteria as described in the text protocol, resuspend the cells to a concentration of 1 times 10 to the 6 cells per 150 microliters. Prepare at least 1.2 times 10 to the 6 cells per mouse to have enough cells for loading the pipette. With neural stem cell medium, wash the cells 3 times in a 10 milliliter conical vial spinning at 500 times G for 5 minutes at room temperature to pellet the cells after each wash. Before the final spin, count the cells. Then, after spinning, aspirate the supernatant, leaving about 25 microliters of liquid to prevent aspirating any cells. Next, prepare a 2x suspension by adding 1 milliliter of diluent C to the cell pellet and use gentle pipetting to resuspend it. Immediately before staining, prepare a 2x dye solution in diluent C by adding 4 microliters of the PKH26 ethanol dye solution to 1 milliliter of diluent C in a tube and mix well to disperse. Quickly add the 1 milliliter of 2x cell suspension to 1 milliliter of 2x dye solution and immediately mix the sample by pipetting. After incubating the cell dye suspension for 1 to 5 minutes, stop the staining by adding an equal volume of 1% BSA solution in HBSS and incubate for 1 minute. Then. Centrifuge the cells at 500 times G for 10 minutes and carefully remove the supernatant. Use 10 milliliters of complete medium to resuspend the cell pellet for assessment of cell recovery, cell viability, and fluorescence intensity. Centrifuge the cells, discard the supernatant, and add 10 milliliters of HBSS to the cell pellet. Wash twice with HBSS and resuspend the cells in a sterile physiological solution. After preparing the surgical area and a mouse according to the text protocol, place the animal dorsal side up on a slide warmer to avoid hypothermia during the surgery. With a scalpel, Make a vertical incision over the region of interest from T7 to T12. Using forceps, hold the skin and superficial fat pad found between the space between the 5th and 6th thoracic processes. 
Under a stereo microscope, count the process under the blood vessel as T6. Then, move to T7. Then, place a little bearing under the ventral side of the mouse to increase the curvature of the spine and use Grafa forceps to block the spine to immobilize it. Next, use a scalpel to cut the paravertebral muscles bilaterally from T7 to T10 at the vertebral level until the dorsal surface of the lamina contacts the scalpel tip. Then, use a scalpel to tick off the junction from T7 to T10 at the vertebral level until the dorsal surface of the lamina contacts the scalpel tip. Stop in the space between the T8 and T9 tiny protrusions. Then, use micro scissors to cut the tissue between T8 and T9 and T9 and T10. Now, use the rongeur to remove the T9 process. Expose the junction by using micro scissors to carefully scrape away the muscle layer. Continue until the bone is exposed. Use forceps to remove the muscles from the lamina and open a small space between the vertebrae. Then, gently insert the micro scissors under the bone, cut the lamina on both sides, and use the forceps to remove it, exposing the cord. Use the rongeur to remove any free or jagged bone fragments that are left behind. Then, remove the top half of the T9 dorsal process. After following the IH impactor device protocol according to the guidelines in the text, use 4O absorbable suture to close the incision by first covering the exposed spinal cord at the site of the removed lamina. Taking care not to pinch off the underlying muscles, use two or three reflex clips to close the skin. Inject two milliliters of saline in the lower back subcutaneously, and place the mouse in a pre-warmed cage on a heating pad to recover. To carry out a tail vein injection of cells, resuspend the cells in the test tube and load 75 microliters into a 0.3 milliliter syringe, ensuring that no bubbles are present in the cell suspension. To avoid cell sedimentation, keep the syringe in a horizontal position. Place the mouse underneath the heat lamp to dilate the tail veins. Then. Gently pull the mouse into the restrainer to visualize the lateral tail vein, which appears as a narrow blue line. Use an alcohol swab to clean the tail, and once the vein is visualized, grab the tail vein between the middle finger and thumb of the left hand. The T9 contusion demonstrated in this video caused the transient loss of hind limb function. 3 times 10 to the 5th cells, or PBS, were injected into the tail vein in 3 injections carried out 30 minutes, 6 hours, and 18 hours after injury. As shown here, within 2 to 3 weeks, PBS treated injured mice improved and hind limb function reached three points of basso mouse scale, or BMS. Mice treated with PMNPCs, however, showed a higher recovery and reached 4.5 points of BMS. As seen here, most engrafted PMNPCs labeled with PKH26 accumulated at the edges of the lesion, forming clusters soon after administration. The transplanted cells migrated along the lesion edges and in a more diffused fashion where they differentiated into neurons. At 30 days after lesion and transplantation, the cell body of PMNPCs increased in size, and in most cells, dendritic-like processes were obvious and fully immunostained by the specific antibodies to MAP2.
While attempting this procedure, it is important to remember that higher forces may, may increase mortality in the animal due to a more severe injuries. Thus, we suggest to use uh, uh, our paradigm of lesioning paradigm uh, that is uh, followed by a more reproducible uh, process of recovery. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to obtain a reproducible experimental model of traumatic spinal cord injury in the mouse by using the infinite horizon impactor.